First, I want to say welcome. Welcome, everybody, to this retreat. Entering the Dhamma, entering the Buddha's teaching. This retreat will be uh, quite, quite flexible, and we will um, begin by learning a few important aspects of the Buddha's teaching in wholesome mental development. His wonderful teaching on the nature of the mind and the nature of happiness. And there are hardly no better way of speaking about his teaching than to mention the Eight Spoke Path, and which is categorized in eight uh, parts. And begin always with wise understanding, how we see and how we understand things. And that is always how everything begins on this path. This is something that we will learn to develop. We cannot rush this. We cannot jump at it. We can't. It's not something that happens in a lightning bolt of a moment. It is something that we developed. And that's why he called it bhavana, development. And this falls into the aggregate of what he called wisdom, what I called also discernment. And this is very essential for us to begin with because we need to understand what is causing us trouble and what is causing us happiness. So these are very briefly, in a nutshell, the Four Noble Truths. And Very quickly we realized, understanding this, that these, there are three things that cause us problems and three things that are the cause for our own happiness. And they are opposites. And this is at the core of the Buddha's awakening. And the three things that cause us problems is when we want a lot of things all the time. These are... These, this will, um, in, the sh in, short, in the short run and in the long run, will start creating impressions on the mind and will start to stick to us. And we don't really recognize this. It simply happens because it builds up. And when we continually want things, as soon as we want something, that is external to here and now. We've left this place of contentment, which is happiness here and now, for I want this other thing. And the other thing that he taught is the cause of our problems is pushing away things, not wanting things. So there's wanting and then not wanting things to happen. Dislike or... Mm, what is often called um, ill will, but also simply that can be known as disliking, pushing away things. And the third one is a bit of a mixed bag of everything, but mainly this is all uh, lacking awareness or not seeing these things, having wrong ideas about how to find happiness, and that is called moha, uh, confusion. Being confused about what creates us our own happiness and what creates us problems. And these, of course, um, the unwholesome states, they are the hindrances to not only to meditation, but to happiness, to our daily activities, to mental clarity. And when we understand this using discernment, we understand that when we become angry, we're not happy. <laughs> and when we're constantly worrying about what we want, what we should want, what we should do, we're constantly engaged in these 
external things that are not even here now. We're not very happy. But when we are generous, the opposite of wanting, when we are content, the opposite of wanting, we are happy here and now. And when we are loving and kind, when we are compassionate, when we cultivate joy, that is the opposite of anger, the opposite of dislike. And when we cultivate awareness and wise understanding, discernment, then we are cultivating the opposite of confusion. We are learning what is creating us happiness, what is giving us happiness. And very shortly, when we realize all of these things, and that's what the Buddha discovered, then there is an understanding that cannot be overlooked, is that some of our actions, whether speech or whether bodily action, and the way we live, our livelihood, will embody this understanding because there are some things that when we we say that when we are angry for example or we do when we are angry but if we understand that anger is not for our own happiness when there are things that we will not do and we will not say <laughs> And that's where the virtue comes in. And this is a protection for us and also a vehicle to uplift the mind. Because when we understand what causes happiness and what causes problems, well then we will move away from these speech, these bodily actions, and these ways of living that are creating and that are rooted in these unwholesome states and we will cultivate and lean towards actions of body, speech and mind and ways of living that are harmonious to these wonderful wholesome states that are generosity, contentment, loving kindness, compassion, joy, steadiness of mind, steady awareness. And then once this is understood and practiced in our daily life, then comes something that we call wise practice, or this is where the actual sitting meditation practice comes, for example. But this is not only sitting meditation, this is mental development. So this is also called right effort. And these, this right effort comes into four steps usually, but mainly it is about abandoning the unwholesome states of mind, like the hindrances, and cultivating wholesome ones, like the Brahma Viharas, the loving kindness, compassion, joy, equanimity, the four support, the seven supports of awakening. And as we will go further into this, uh, onto this retreat, I am simply uh, explaining it in a nutshell right now. And this is by this is the action verb of the path. And so as we learn to relax, release the tension that arises from the unwholesome states and to bring up wholesome ones, whether it's loving kindness, whether it's compassion, whether it's any one of the Brahma Viharas or whether it is any of the four resting places of awareness, which we will come to. then this will flourish naturally into 
wise awareness. And that is this awareness that happens naturally by cultivating wholesome states and abandoning the unwholesome ones. So when we speak of the hindrances or worrying or restlessness or agitation, um, anxiety, uh, some people their hindrances will be more uh, craving certain kinds of food or uh, some other activities or some people are more inclined towards um, anger or um, dislike, judging, being uh, critical on themselves and others. Everybody has a different mental makeup. But as we learn which which one is ours <laughs> and which, which state arise in our mind and which what is our own mental makeup and how to let go of these unwholesome states and move towards loving and forgiving states that are imbued with awareness themselves then we will move towards what is called wise awareness and this will simply happen naturally because that is the nature of wholesome states is that they are aware. There is awareness in loving attention. There is awareness in compassion. There is awareness in joy. And that is exactly what the Buddha's teaching is about. Pointing us that these wholesome states are in fact imbued with awareness and that when these states are present awareness is present and to look at reality and to look at our own experience as it actually is without without proliferating about it without adding to it without creating more tension than necessary in our minds and so to liberate our minds and as we become more and more aware naturally an open kind of awareness we will also be talking about um, the the different kinds of meditations that exist perhaps right now and um, what this what this path has to offer and the, what qualifies this path and we will discover and navigate through the levels of meditation that the Buddha taught there are four main ones but they also can be expanded to eight or nine sometimes and we will be speaking a little bit more about this learning about the qualities of each of these levels of understanding which are called jhanas and these levels are they are the insights on the mind and there are many ways that we can understand this and these levels of meditation, they tell us what the mind is doing, how the mind works. And so this is a summary of the Eightfold Path. And in many discourses that he gave, the Buddha, sometimes he was asked, what, what is this meditation? What is this wise meditation that you teach? And he said, it is that Eightfold Path. So this Eightfold Path, sometimes we, we look at it thinking, oh, this is just the like theory of, you know, the, this is the, all of the Buddha's teaching. And meditation is a bit different. Meditation is just this one thing that is part of the Eightfold Path. But it is not. The Eightfold Path is the meditation. And so we will... The, and this is very important for us to understand because that is the stream of the Dhamma. That is the Dhamma. 
and to understand the Dhamma is to understand this Eightfold Path.